Good day. So let's have this example for cantilever method. Okay, for example, we have this uh, frame acted by two lateral loads. And for this example, uh, we are assuming that the cross-sectional areas of all columns will be equal. So let's say area 1, that is the area for column ADG. Area 2, cross-sectional area for column BEH. And uh, lastly, that is for column CF, area uh, 3. So first assumption for cantilever method, I, we assume the middle of all columns and beams of the frame will be uh, points of uh, inflection. If we say points of inflection, I, at that point, the magnitude of the moment is equal to uh, zero. So that is I, the mid height of all columns. So let's say these are the points of inflection, A, I, B, uh, C. For D, E, this is, let's say, uh, mid span, that is uh, D. Mid span of E, F is uh, E. Okay, mid height of column D, G will be point F. E, H, mid height will be point G. And mid span of beam G, H will be, let's say, H. So these small letters, I will uh, represent uh, the points of inflection of the frame. Okay, second assumption from the cantilever method is we need to locate the centroid of all columns on a given story. So we are starting on the second uh, level. So the total height of the second level is uh, 4 meters. We are just considering the upper half. That will be okay, 2 meters. Okay, so let's say these are uh, the points of inflection for the two columns. Let's say this is the point F initially and point uh, G. Yes, that is uh, point F and uh, point G. Okay, so since uh, for this example, uh, the cross-sectional area of uh, the leftmost column is equal to the area of the middle column. Area 1 is equal to uh, area 2. Obviously, okay, if we are to locate the centroid of these two columns, is obviously at the mid-span of beam uh, GH. Okay, so let's say this uh, vertical line is the center of gravity of this or the centroid of these two columns. So all columns uh, to the to the left of this center of gravity will be under tension. So let's say that is away from point G or joint G. Let's say this is the axial force for column uh, DG. That is under tension or when it comes to direction, it is uh, downward. And this will be uh, the axial force for column this is for column EH. It is under compression since it is towards uh, joint H. And it is uh, upward in terms of uh, direction. Now, if we are to consider the stresses experienced by these two columns, so the direction of the stress is uh, downward. Let's say this is the stress for column uh, DG. And let's say this is uh, the stress for column uh, EH. If we are to check their uh, relation based on this uh, diagram, uh, they are both uh, 3 meters away from uh, the, cent the centroid of these two columns. So if we are to uh, check their relation, uh, basically we have the stress for column DG uh, is to 3 is equal to the stress for column EH is to uh, 3. Or we can cancel uh, that three uh, uh, basically or obviously uh, the stress for column DG is simply equal to uh, the stress for column uh, EH. If you are to recall what is the equivalent of stress, stress is basically equal to the force over area. Okay, so from this equation we have that as uh, the stress for column DG is equal to the stress for column uh, EH. That is the force for column uh, DG okay, divided by area. What is the area? Okay, for, a sim, uh, for a simpler analysis, we assume area 1, area 2. Uh, the same with area 3, uh, simply equal to 1 uh, unit or 1 square unit. This is divided by 1 equal to the actual force for uh, EH is 2 or divided by the cross-sectional area. We assume that to be 1 unit since we have equal areas. So simply, we have okay, the axial force for DG is equal to the axial force for uh, EH. So next time, if you are to encounter this uh, case, okay, the axial forces for both columns will be 
equal. But one is under tension, the other is under compression. And also, if we have this, if we have only two columns, or uh, this upper portion of the second level is obviously determinate, which means we can compute for the uh, for these two actual forces. Okay, so we can do. Okay, I'll be doing the summation of moment. Let's say point of inflection F equal to zero, assuming clockwise moments to be positive. So we have that as the 80 kilonewtons. This is multiplied by 2, okay, minus the axial force for column E, H. This is multiplied by 6 meters is now equal to a 0. So this will be the magnitude of the axial force for column E, H. And also equal to the axial force for column D, G is equal to, what is that value? We have 80, this is multiplied by 2. This is divided by 6. Right, we have that as 26. Right, let's say this is 26.66 as uh, 7 kilonewtons. Right, so we have now right, the axial forces for these uh, two columns. And that is column DG. This is 26.66 as uh, 7 kilonewtons. Uh, the same with EH. This is 26.66 as uh, 667 kilonewtons. Okay, for both columns. So next time, if you are to encounter this case, uh, you can uh, proceed directly uh, to the uh, equation of equilibrium. Uh, just to clarify, that's why I, I discussed the stresses, or the relation of the stresses and the relation of the uh, forces. So now we need to locate okay, the centroid of the three columns on the first uh, level. Okay, so again, for a simpler analysis, we, we assume that the cross-sectional area will be equal to 1. So that is by uh, Barignons. Let's say that is the area total. Okay, I'm looking by the bar x is equal to area 1 x sub 1 plus okay, we have the area 2 x sub 2 plus okay, the area 3 x sub uh, 3. So let's say uh, we are using the leftmost uh, column, that is column ADG as our uh, reference line. So let's say this is uh, the reference uh, reference line. Uh, it is uh, area total. Since we have three equal areas, uh, obviously our uh, total area is 1 plus 1, uh, plus 1, multiplied by bar x is equal to area 1, that is multiplied by 0 since that is uh, our reference line, plus area 2 is also 1, but Okay, that is column number 2, column BEH. How far is column BEH from column ADG? That is, we have 6 uh, meters, then plus area 3 is also equal to 1. That is, at a distance of uh, 6 meters plus 8 meters, okay, that is uh, 14 uh, meters. So this will be okay, the value of the bar X or the location of the centroid of the three columns of the first uh, level of the frame. So let's say that is, okay, we may, ignore, uh, we may uh, neglect this uh, term since that is uh, 0. So we have that as I1 times 6 a plus I the 1 times uh, 14. Uh, this is divided by, uh, divided by 3, the total area. So its location will be at a distance of 6.667, let's say. I have a distance of 6.667 meters from column, or from, or let's say from column ADG, or from, uh, let's say from column AD. And then to the right. So there's 6.667. Okay, so which means that is after column BE, since I beam GH is only, uh, beam GH and beam DE is only uh, 6 meters. Okay, so we have the, the location of the centroid of uh, the three columns on the first level is the distance of uh, 6.667 meters from the leftmost uh, column. Then okay, we can now uh, uh, identify the direction of the axial forces for these uh, columns. So let's say the reaction at A that will be, uh, let's say the axial force, let's say this is the axial force for column A, uh, AD will be uh, downward since it is, uh, to the left of the centroid 
of these three columns also with okay, the axial force for column BE or the reaction at B will be uh, the vertical reaction at B will be uh, downward okay, so let's say this is okay, the axial force for column uh, this is for column BE and since we have one column okay, to the right of the center of gravity let's say this uh, green line this is the center of gravity of these three columns Okay, the reaction, the vertical reaction at C will be upward. So let's say this is okay, the axial force for column uh, CF. So based on their uh, location okay, with respect to the center of gravity of these three columns. Okay, for the stresses of each uh, column, so we have okay, a, a tensile stress for column AD, but when it comes to direction, it is, okay, we say it is uh, downward. Let's say this is the stress for column uh, AD. So the same with the stress for column BE, it is also uh, downward. Let's say this is the stress okay, for BE. And uh, lastly, we have an upward uh, direction for the stress for column uh, CF, but that is under uh, compression. Then we are just to uh, form similar triangles okay, for these uh, stresses. And then we are to take the relations, uh, the relation of these uh, stresses uh, with respect to their uh, distance from uh, the, ce the centroid or the center of gravity of these three uh, columns. So that is, uh, we have 6.667 from, uh, from the left. Uh, what about from the right? What is this uh, distance? So that is the same as, uh, we have a total horizontal distance of, I think, 14 meters. So 14 minus uh, the 6.667, uh, uh, we can have it as uh, this distance is 7.333 uh, meters. And this uh, small distance uh, from the centroid of all columns to column BE, that is the excess uh, of the 6.667. Uh, so this is 0 0.667 uh, meters. So we can have uh, the relation of these three stresses by ratio and proportion of similar uh, triangles. So that is, we have the stress for column AD is to 4.66, or that is, or that is um, 6.667. Uh, so by the way, we'll be using block pen. Uh, so again, we have the stress for column AD uh, this is the stress for column AD is to uh, 6.667 uh, is equal to the stress for column uh, BE uh, is to uh, 0 0.667 uh, is now equal to the stress for column CF is to 7.333. Uh, so again, we are using area 1 equal to area 2 equal to area 3. We are using one unit for a simpler analysis or for a more simple analysis. So, I, by the way, how do we compute for stress? So, stress is basically equal to the force divided by uh, the area. So, we may simplify this uh, term. So, what is that uh, stress AD, that is the force for, uh, for column AD divided by the area, which is 1, divided by 6.667 is simply equal to the axial force for member BE divided by its cross-sectional area also equal to 1 divided by 0 0.667 is equal to okay, the actual stress per column CF divided by 1 square unit for the area this is divided by 7.333 so as you can see since our cross-sectional area is uh, simply assumed to be uh, equal to 1 okay, we can uh, simplify that okay, the relation of the forces or the axial forces for all columns for the first level will be okay, the axial force for AD divided by 6.667 is equal to the axial force for column BE divided by 0 0.667 is equal to the axial force for column CF is to okay, 7, oh, correction for this one, should be 7 point, uh, it's only 7 point, uh, 3, 3, uh, 3 meters. So this is 7.333 meters. 
So next time, if you are to encounter this case, we have equal cross-sectional areas, you can directly proceed to the, re to the uh, relation of the axial uh, forces okay, using okay, the similar uh, triangles. Okay. So since we now know, uh, we now know the direction of the axial forces for the first uh, level, okay, we separate okay, the upper half of uh, the frame starting from, uh, let's say, from the point of inflection on the first levels, uh, first levels columns. Uh, we have, uh, this is uh, point A, okay, point B, then uh, point C. So we have a downward, a downward axial force for column AD. So we have a downward axial force for column BE. And we have an upward force that is for column uh, CF. So based on their uh, location, uh, with respect to the center of gravity of all columns uh, on the first uh, level. So now we can now uh, have an equation. So let's say uh, we can do... So I'll be doing the summation of moment at the point of inflection A equal to 0, assuming clockwise moments to be uh, positive. So what are the clockwise uh, moments? So we have that as okay, the first lateral load, 80 kilonewtons, that is at a distance of, okay, this is 3 meters, this is 4 meters, at a distance of 7 meters, okay, plus okay, the 200 kilonewtons at a distance of 3 meters, then plus okay, this axial force, the axial force for member BE, that is uh, multiplied by 6 meters, okay, minus, the axial force for column CF, okay, multiplied by, okay, how far is column CF? That is at a distance of 14 meters equal to uh, 0. So we'll be having an equation in terms of CF and BE. So let's say this is the axial force for column CF. Okay, this is multiplied by 14. Okay, minus... I, 6 times the axial force for uh, BE is equal to, all you have to do is uh, take the summation of these two terms. Okay, that is, we have 80, this is multiplied by 7, okay, plus okay, 200, this is multiplied by uh, 3. So we have that as 1,160 kN a meter. So 1160. So we may use okay, our previous equation. Okay, we may uh, take the relation okay, uh, between uh, BE and uh, CF. So let's say I will be using these two terms. So let's have the equivalent of the axial force for member CF will be equal to okay, the 7.333 divided by uh, 0 0.667 of the axial force for column uh, BE. So we substitute this equivalent on our uh, equation. Okay, so by substitution, we have that as, okay, this is 14. Okay, so this is uh, 14, okay, multiplied by what is the equivalent of the axial force for member CF. So that is 7.333 divided by 0 0.667 of the axial force for member uh, BE. So this is, we have uh, 7.333 divided by 0 0.667 for the axial force for member BE. Uh, this is minus uh, 6 times the axial force for member BE is equal to 1,160 kN so first axial force to be solved is the axial force for column uh, BE. By computing for this uh, value, we have that as uh, 14 multiplied by 7.33. This is divided by 0 0.667. That is minus uh, 6. And 1160 divided by that value. All right, so we can have it as 7.8. 7 uh, 42 kN. So that is the axial force for member uh, BE. Okay, so since we have now the axial force for member BE, we can now compute for the axial force for the other uh, members or other columns. 
Okay, so again, we have the axial force for member uh, BE is equal to 7.842 kilo newtons. Okay, so we check that value. Okay, 7.842. Okay, so we can now compute for the axial force for column CF. Uh, by the way, so the axial force for column BE is, uh, this is downward. Uh, this is for the axial force for column CF is equal to 7.333. This is divided by 0 0.667 or uh, multiplied by 7.842. So what will be this uh, value? Uh, so we have that as 7.33, uh, 33. 3 divided by 0 0.667 uh, this is multiplied by 7.842 uh, kilonewtons so that is 86.215 86.215 kilonewtons and for column CF its uh, direction is upward for the axial force 86.215 uh, right, then okay, we may use the relation between uh, ADN uh, this one, uh, ADN, uh, BE. So we have uh, the axial force. Uh, that is the axial force for column AD will be equal to uh, 6.667. Uh, this is divided by 0 0.667 uh, of the axial force for column uh, BE. So we substitute the equal to 6.667 divided by 0 0.667 uh, okay, multiplied by okay, the axial force for BE is 7.842 uh, uh, kilonewtons. Okay, the axial force for column AD is now equal to that is we have 6.667 uh, divided by 0 0.667 uh, okay, multiplied by 7.842 uh, kilonewtons. That is equal to 78.385 uh, we say uh, 78.385 uh, kilo newtons and it's a uh, direction it is under tension it will be uh, downward okay, if we are to check okay, the equilibrium the summation of forces vertical should be equal to zero so we have two uh, we have an upward reaction that is at base C that is the 86.215 uh, okay, minus the downward forces that is 7.842 okay, minus the 78.385 uh, if we are, we are checking the equilibrium here that is negative 3 over uh, 250 so this is a very small value 0 0.012 okay, we may assume that is a negligible uh, value okay, or almost uh, negligible so we may assume that these uh, values are uh, correct Okay, so we have now the axial forces for these uh, three columns. Uh, AD is equal to 78.385 uh, kilonewtons. Okay, and BE is equal to 7.842 uh, kilonewtons. And okay, uh, CF okay, is equal to uh, 86.215 kilonewtons. Uh, so these are the axial forces. For the three columns on the first uh, level, okay, 78.385, 7.842, 86 uh, So up, uh, after computing the axial forces for all columns for both uh, levels, okay, we may now do the complete analysis of the entire okay, entire frame. Okay, so after the computation of the axial forces for all columns, we may now proceed to the complete analysis of the entire uh, frame. If you are using cantilever method, a first thing to solve is uh, the axial force for each column of uh, the frame. So I'll be starting at a uh, joint G, uh, wherein the 80 kilonewtons is acting. Uh, so we may compute for the shear force. So let's say this is uh, the shear force again. It is the perpendicular force to the uh, member. So let's say this is for the shear force for uh, b for column. This is for column uh, DG. Okay, so all we have to do is okay, summation of moment. I think this is I, I think this is uh, the point of inflection H last time or a while ago. 
and that is the point of inflection uh, h all we have to do is uh, do the summation of a moment so i'll be just doing the direct computation so this is the same as 26.667 uh, that is multiplied by 3 meters and that is to be uh, divided by uh, 2 meters uh, okay so we have that is a uh, 40.005 so i'll be using a value let's say a value of a value of uh, 40 kilo uh, newtons is that a uh, 40 uh, take note i'm just using the equation of equilibrium here so we can use summation of forces horizontal uh, summation of forces vertical and the summation of uh, moments so therefore okay we can have now the axial force for beam a uh, gh so let's say this is the axial force for a uh, beam a uh, gh how do we compute for this one all we have to do is the summation of forces horizontal so that's basically uh, the difference of this 80 kilonewtons and the shear for column DG, the 40 kilonewtons. So that is okay, uh, 80 minus uh, 40. So the actual force for, col uh, for beam GH is the same as 40 kilonewtons. Okay, what about the shear for beam GH? So this is uh, the shear for beam GH. Let's say this is okay, the shear for beam G uh, H. What is this value? So all we have to do is summation of forces vertical. What is the only vertical force at joint G? The only vertical force is the 26.667 kilonewtons. The actual force for column uh, D G. So that is the same as okay, we have 26.667. Uh, then for the moment about a uh, joint G. Uh, let's say this will be uh, that moment. Okay, what is the magnitude of this uh, moment? That is the same as uh, the shear force. We have 26.667. Uh, this is multiplied by 3 meters. And we have it as uh, 80.001. Or we can have it as 80, uh, 80 kilonewton uh, meter. So as a checking, uh, what about the shear force for column DG? That is 40 meters, uh, 40 kilonewtons multiplied by 2 meters is obviously uh, this is the same as 80 kilonewton a meter for equilibrium okay, that is for uh, joint G now we proceed to joint H so we have that axial force from joint G uh, this time we take the opposite uh, direction this is now 40 kilonewtons then we'll be having a shear for beam EH or column EH Summation force is horizontal. The only horizontal force is the 40 kilonewtons. So this is the same as I-40. Then what about the shear? So we have the shear earlier from joint G. We have 26.667 upward. So this time, if we are to transfer this one, we take the opposite direction. This is 26.667 downward. Then to check for the moment, so initially we have a moment from the previous joint that is 80 kilonewton counterclockwise so we take this one clock up uh, supposedly it should be why uh, is it uh, supposedly counterclockwise or clockwise uh, initially it is counterclockwise uh, by the way we are to i uh, use the direction of this as uh, here so this we have this is uh, 26.667 times 3 is the same as the 80 kilonewton meter. Then there is a uh, 40 times 2. Uh, that is the same as uh, we have 80 kilonewton uh, meter. So that is for joint G and uh, joint H. Then okay, all we have to do is I okay, transfer those values okay, to the next uh, joint. So from joint G, we proceed to joint uh, D. So we have the axial force from the previous joint that is downward. So this time we take the opposite direction. This is 26.667 upward. We have a shear that is to the left. So this time, this shear should be okay, to the right. Okay, then okay, we may also consider the moment. So there's uh, 80 kilonewton meter. That is 40, uh, this, this 40 kilonewtons times 2. Uh, that is the same as uh, we, we can have it as the 80 kilonewton uh, meter then we are to compute for the other uh, unknown 
Okay, so we may compute for the shear for beam DE. Uh, let's say this is okay, the shear for beam uh, DE. How do we compute that? So we can have it by summation of forces vertical. So I'll be just doing the direct computation. So that is the same as the difference of the two, I think. The difference of these two okay, forces, the 78.385. And at 26.667, uh, uh, is 78.385 uh, kilonewtons less, or okay, 26.667. Okay, so we have it as a uh, 51. This is 51.718. Uh, this is equal to 51.718 kilonewtons. Okay, 51.718 kilonewtons. So what about okay, the actual force? Okay, this actual force, okay, we can have it by summation of forces horizontal. But okay, we don't have yet the shear for this column. Okay, so first, we do the summation of a uh, moment about this joint or about this uh, inflection point. Okay, what, I, uh, what is the name of this inflection point? Okay, I think this is uh, the inflection point at D. Okay, so we are to do summation of moment about this uh, inflection point D. Okay, to compute for the shear, okay, this is for the shear uh, for column okay, AD. So I'll be doing okay, the summation of a uh, moment about okay, the inflection point D equal to zero, assuming clockwise moments to be uh, positive. So that is, we have the shear for column AD, this is multiplied by 3 meters. Okay, then minus the 78.385 kilonewton uh, kilonewtons okay, multiplied by 3 meters. And then plus, okay, we have the 40 kilonewtons. This is multiplied by 2 meters plus the 26.667. Uh, this is multiplied by 3 uh, meters. So okay, did we cons uh, include all forces? So we have okay, the shear uh, AD. Okay, the axial force 78.385, the 40 kilonewton shear, the axial force 26.667. So computing for the shear for uh, column AD, so we have that as okay, the 40 uh, multiplied by 2, then plus okay, the 26.667, this is multiplied by 3. And then minus okay, the 78.385. Okay, this is multiplied by uh, 3 meters. And okay, then to be transposed, which means uh, the assumption uh, the assumed direction is correct, then divided by, this is to be divided by 3. Uh, so we have that as 25.051. We have the shear for column AD is equal to 25.051. I kilo newtons. Okay, so we have uh, the shear AD is equal to 25.051. Uh, so all you have to do is just uh, transfer this value 51.718. So shear AD is equal to 25.0 uh, 51 kilonewtons. Okay, so then uh, we may now do summation of forces horizontal uh, to compute for uh, the axial force. This is the axial force for uh, I call uh, beam, uh, the beam DE. Uh, take note of the color code. Uh, I'm using red for the axial force, shear for the green, then uh, blue for uh, the moment. So by summation of forces horizontal, I think uh, we may do the direct computation. That is the same as 200 okay, minus the 25.051, then plus okay, 40. Uh, that is 214.949. Uh, so how many horizontal forces are we uh, considering? Uh, so we have the 200 kilonewtons, okay, the 40 kilonewtons, uh, this is 25.051. Okay? So we have that value as 214. This is equal to 
ay 214.949409. So that will be the axial force for beam uh, DE. Then to check the equilibrium, so we check the uh, magnitude of the moments. So what is this uh, moment, that value? Okay, we have 25.051, okay, multiplied by 3, is equal to 75. That's 75.153. This is equal to uh, 75.153. Uh, what about the moment caused by this 51.718? Okay, so let's have that value. Okay, that is uh, 51. Point, uh, 0.718 this is multiplied by uh, 3 meters and right, it's equal to 155.154 so it's 155.154 uh, kilonewton meter so the summation of moments should be equal to 0 for equilibrium so we have 2 uh, clockwise and 1 counterclockwise the 2 clockwise is we have the 80 plus the 75.153 the only counterclockwise is the 155.154. And this is equal to negative, point, uh, negative 1 times 10 is negative 3. A very small value. So we have an equilibrium at uh, joint D. So these are uh, the shear forces, uh, the axial forces, and the moments about uh, joint D. But the magnitude of the moment at joint D is the 155.154. Okay? So we now proceed to, okay, to the base A. So at base A, okay, we have the axial force. This is equal to 78.385 kilonewtons. Then the shear, uh, this time to the right, this is 25.051. Point, okay, 25 uh, so we have that moment. That is equal to 75, okay, 75.153. Uh, then okay, the base, uh, the base here at A, that will be the same as 25.051. And the vertical reaction, the vertical reaction at A for equilibrium, it should be downward. That is equal to 78.385 uh, kilonewtons. Then the moment at the base is equal to okay, the 75.153 kilonewton meter. Okay, that is for uh, the base uh, A. Okay, so we may, uh, we may now proceed to joint E. Okay, so we have to do this uh, transfer the, the forces and the moments. So this is the same as okay, the 214.945. Then Okay, from uh, joint H, okay, we have the axial force, uh, this time downward, the 26.667. Then the shear force, this time to the right, the 40 kilonewtons. Okay, and also we have a shear force at uh, beam DE, uh, this time downward. This is the 51.718. Uh, uh, kilonewtons. Okay, so far those are uh, the values. So I think okay, we may compute this time okay, the shear force okay, the shear force, this is the shear force for beam EF. Okay, how do we compute for that value? So as a checking, it should be close enough to the value of 86.615. Okay, so we can uh, check that uh, later. So, by summation of forces vertical, okay, all we have to do is the, uh, the difference. Uh, I think all of them are downwards. Uh, these, are, these vertical forces, all, all of them are downward. That is the 51.718 uh, plus uh, the 26.667 uh, uh, plus axial force 7.842 kilonewtons. That is 86.227. Okay, so we have that value. Uh, 86. This is equal to 86.227 kilonewtons. As you can see, we have, I think, a discrepancy. I do, maybe uh, due to uh, rounding. And uh, then computing for the other values. Uh, so let's have 
Uh, this time, the shear. This is uh, the shear for beam or for column BE. Okay, how do we compute for that uh, value? So all you have to do is uh, do the summation of moments. Okay, at this point, let's say this is, okay, this is the point of inflection. I think this is point E a while ago. So we do the summation of moment about that point uh, E. So this is okay, the summation of moment about the point, in, point of inflection E equal to 0, assuming clockwise moments to be uh, positive. So what are the clockwise moments? That is, the shear for column uh, BE, this is multiplied by 3, okay, then plus the 40 kilonewtons, this is multiplied by 2, and then I think the rest are counter uh, clockwise. Okay, minus 7.842, okay, this is multiplied by... Uh, 4 meters, then minus uh, 26.667, uh, okay, multiplied by 4 meters, then minus okay, the 51.718, okay, how far is that value, uh, the shear force for beam DE, that is at a distance of 3 meters plus 4 meters equal to uh, 0. So we are now to compute for okay, the shear for beam, uh, uh, yes, for the shear for column uh, BE. So this is the same as we have 40, this is multiplied by 2, okay, minus okay, the 7.842, this is multiplied by 4, okay, then minus we have 26.667, okay, to be multiplied by also by 4, then minus okay, we have 51.718, this is multiplied by 3 plus 4 is a 7. This is negative value, then transpose, it will be positive to be divided by a 3. Is 140.02. So we have 140.02 kilo newtons. That will be the shear for column uh, BE. Okay, so we have this uh, value is equal to 140.02. Or maybe if we are using all uh, decimal places, maybe uh, this is exactly 140 kilonewtons. Okay, then we can now compute for the actual force. This is okay, the actual force for beam EF. How do we compute that? Okay, by summation of forces, horizontal. Okay, so what are the horizontal forces? We have the 214.945. Is that 214.945 a while ago? So let us uh, double check. Okay, so we are doing a, a little uh, checking here. That is, we have uh, the 200 okay, plus uh, 40 okay, minus uh, the 25.051. It should be 949, not 945. Uh, a little correction here. This is uh, 214.94. Uh, it should be 949. Okay, so at joint E, again, we proceed to joint E, then we are doing summation of forces horizontal. Uh, we have the 214.949 okay, plus a 40, then less, okay, the shear for BE, the 140.02. It's 114.929. Uh, okay, this is equal to okay, 114. Point uh, nine twenty nine kilo uh, newton. Okay, so to check the equilibrium about uh, joint E, uh, we are to check the values of uh, the moments. So we have this uh, in, uh, a while ago. That is the forty times two. This is eighty kilo newton meter. Uh, this moment I uh, also equal from uh, joint D. It should be equal to. The one hundred fifty-five point one five four kilonewton meter, and this uh, moment caused by the one hundred forty point zero two. Let's say this is one forty points zero two. This is multiplied by three meters. Let's equal to four hundred twenty point zero six. Let's say four two zero point zero six. Then I right, the moment caused by this uh, shear force. I for beam EF. 
Okay, what is that value? The 86.227, 86.227 multiplied by 4. It's 344.909, uh, 908. 344.908. We check. 344.908. So, okay, let us check the equilibrium about this joint. So, how many counterclockwise and clockwise moments? So, the clockwise moments here, we have the 420.06 plus uh, 80. Uh, this is the actual moment at joint E, 500.06 kilonewton meter. I uh, less 155.154 less 344.908. So we have a very small uh, value. Uh, let's say supposedly uh, this should be equal to uh, zero, but this is a very small value, negligible, negative two times ten raised to negative uh, three. Okay, that is for uh, that is for joint uh, joint E. Then we proceed to uh, base B. Okay, so we have the actual force at uh, this time upward. Okay, the seven point eight uh, forty two kilonewtons. Okay, the shear force. This is now one hundred forty point zero two kilonewton. Then the moment is equal to I okay, four hundred twenty point zero six. Then at base B, okay, the vertical reaction about B should be downward, the 7.842 uh, kilonewtons. Okay, the base here is to the left, 140.02 uh, kilonewtons. And the moment is uh, counterclockwise. Okay, the magnitude is equal to 420.06 kilonewton uh, meter. So that is for, okay, for base B. Okay, then we proceed to our okay, joint F. So as you can see, we have uh, a little discrepancy here if we are to uh, talk about the shear. So the shear for this okay, from joint E is equal to 86.227. Uh, we have as, okay, let us check the discrepancy, 86.227 uh, okay, less okay, the 86.215. Uh, we have 3 over uh, 50. That is actually the discrepancy if we are to uh, recall uh, the summation of forces vertical we did for the columns of the first level. Okay, then for the moments, okay, by the way, we have the axial force is equal to 114.929. That will be the same as the shear force for column CF. This is equal to 114.929. Then for the moment, okay, so that is equal to 300, 344.908. Then uh, if you are to check, okay, what is 114.929? I okay, multiplied by 3. Is 344. Okay, a little discrepancy again here. Uh, 344.787. So it's uh, 344.787. So approximately, okay, we may assume that uh, they are approximately equal. So due to uh, rounding. And then we proceed to the last base that is at base C. So we have an axial force of 86.215 kilonewtons, a shear force of 114.929 kilonewtons, and this a moment, this is 344.787. Okay, then we proceed to the base reactions at C. Okay, so it should be an upward vertical reaction of 86.215 kilonewtons. The base shear should be to the left at a magnitude of 114.929. And a moment reaction, it should be counterclockwise, a magnitude of 344.787 kilonewton meter. So this will be the complete analysis of uh, the entire frame considering I. Okay, uh, the axial forces, the shear forces, and the moments.